Known as the cradle of aviation, Long Island has a rich history of taking to the skies and to space. But as manufacturing opportunities have moved out of the region, some companies are still keeping their feet planted firmly right here on Long Island. I made the decision uh, to instead invest on Long Island. I believe in the people, I believe in the educational institutions here. Uh, and the rich history again. You know, this is where this is where it all happened, and this is where I want to grow my company. We explore the business outlook and discuss what can be done to propel Long Island's aerospace and defense industries into the future. Long Island continues to provide uh, important product for the prime contractors, both in the commercial and in the military side, and we will use our sophistication to take on more work share. It's all straight ahead on this edition of the Long Island Business Report. Funding for this program has been made possible by Charlotte and David Eckert and the Rausch Foundation. And now from Malloy College at the Madison Theater, here's Jim Paymar with the Long Island Business Report. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Jim Paymar with the Long Island Business Report. Long Island has historically been known as a leader in the aerospace and defense industries. And joining me to speak about the general business climate of this sector is Anne Shibunko Moore. She is the president and CEO of GSE Dynamics and Hop Hog. And Peter Retaliata, he is the president and CEO of Air Industries Group located in Bayshore. Thank you both for being with us today. Thanks for having us. The cradle of Aviation, Long Island, uh, Floyd Bennett Field, Mit which is in Brooklyn, but uh, we consider it Long Island sometimes. Uh, Mitchell Field, Republic uh, Field, uh, uh, Roosevelt Field. We started aviation. Amelia Earhart, Charles Lindbergh, they were all here. Grumman was here. You used to work at uh, Grumman, Pete. Yes. Uh, where are we, Anne, today in terms of manpower, manufacturing? What is aerospace? and the defense industry mean to Long Island today? Well, I think we're at a unique phase. I think we're still sort of recreating uh, who we are today based on that rich history that you just mentioned. Uh, I don't think defense manufacturing ever left Long Island, but I think we've sort of evolved from it. Of course, when Grumman left, uh, what happened was a lot of small companies formed out of that. A lot of small companies that are still here today, of which GSE uh, is one of them. So there's still always been that rich um, skill set on Long Island with manufacturing. And I think now, again, looking at the new capabilities that are out there and the different opportunities that are out there, uh, workforce is really the big thing that we have to focus on in order to keep that and sustain the businesses that are here. Um, I think it's a you know, very unique opportunity to really engage the younger generation, you know, engage them in understanding what that rich history is of Long Island and keep them here uh, working for companies like uh, Air Industries and GSA. Pete, you spent 22 years at Grumman and Northrop bought Grumman and Grumman started to leave the island. Uh, what happened in that transition? How did we reshape or reformulate the aerospace industry as a result of Grumman's uh, departure? Well, a couple of things have happened. Uh, first of all, as Grumman and Republic receded from the island, uh, another thing happened and that is that the larger aerospace companies in the country merged and consolidated and they started to buy a larger portion of their work share from subcontractors. So you saw this natural group of subcontractors supporting Grumman and Republic on Long Island grow to now start to supply Boeing and Sikorsky and Lockheed and others. Mm -hmm. So oddly enough, the small business team on Long Island is still pretty large and capable, has become more competitive and taken advantage of technologies like computerization and, and automated equipment, but we're still healthy and very capable and very much in the business globally and, uh, and certainly uh, domestically. And I, I was going through the, the research and uh, we have over 800 companies in the aerospace uh, sector here on Long Island. We, the number sounds about right, I haven't checked recently, but that sounds about right based on uh, the last. And what are the employment numbers and how significant and important is aerospace manufacturing to Long Island? Well, again, I think we get caught up in the statistics, which is why I won't actually report that. Right? Okay. <laughs> I'll right. leave that to the experts. All right. um, but what I, you know, in, in the talks that I do, and as I try to encourage people to stay in this line of business, I talk about, you know, manufacturing companies as a whole. 
you know, whether we have 2,800 or 3,200 overall in the manufacturing sector. You mentioned defense specifically. Um, with all of those, if we each hire one to two people a year, you know, with a consistent growth, uh, to me that's significant in what we can do with the workforce on Long Island, and that's the message that I want to keep sending out. You know, it's not the large grumman and the large numbers that we're hiring or firing. To me, it's if you can take this, this lump sum of small businesses and, and consistently grow them over the years where they're hiring one or two or three people a year, you know, to me that can make a marked um, you know, impact on Long Island and the workforce. And Long Island, as all of us well know, is an extremely expensive place to live, to work. Uh, our taxes are high. Uh, the cost of living is very high, housing is high, land uh, costs are high. And you uh, were faced with a decision not right. too long ago about Correct. whether or not to stay on Long Island or leave Long Island because of the cost factor, right. and you decided to stay. Well, and I will clarify, I think everyone knows I'm very loyal to Long Island. It was not so much leaving, but really where was I going to stick my feet in and grow? Um, and the growing and the expansion of my company is really where I was faced with the cost analysis, of which I've said to many people, don't look at the cost analysis, mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, it's more the subject of things that you have to, have to look at. Um, I do have a facility in Georgia, and that's what I was looking at. I could expand down there, because land and everything is so much less expensive. Uh, or I could look at packages in South Carolina, where Boeing is located, and, and focus on growing down there. And I did, I made the decision uh, to instead invest on Long Island. I believe in the people, I believe in the educational institutions here, uh, and the rich history. Again, mm -hmm. you know, this is, where, this is where it all happened, and this is where I want to grow my company. Um, so I did buy, I just bought a 57,000 square foot building. Uh, we're filling it and expanding it, and uh, I'm excited. I'm hiring people, uh, getting new work in from all the different uh, OEMs and, and the Air Force. Um, so I'm very optimistic. I got, you know, again, support, um, from Suffolk County, uh, from New York State. I, they want businesses to grow here, but uh, as you know, it's, it's yeah, challenging. It's and you, and you do have to look at the other assets that are here that you sort of have to get away from the accounting and the numbers and look at the broader picture of what you're vested in. And for me, I'm vested in the region and, and I'm excited about where we're going as a region. Pete, how do we remain competitive? I mean, every region of the country would love to have high paying manufacturing jobs in the aerospace uh, division. Uh, how do we keep people here? Why are you here? Why are you staying here? Well, I think we should go back, first of all, a little bit to our heritage. Uh, Grumman has, has been on the island for many years in the past, and, and others, producing more sophisticated equipment and product than their competitors. And uh, while it is expensive and has been expensive here, we've always been more productive and in many cases more capable. I think that's still true. When I first left Grumman about 18 years ago, 17 and a half maybe, uh, and went into this machining small business side, we were making parts for the big companies in competition around the country. Today we're building full landing gear and flight controls, a much more sophisticated product, uh, one that not everybody can build, and the kind of thing that we are sole and single source with our customers because of things like quality and reliability. So I still must be competitive on a cost line, but I'm also... Uh, providing more value, I think, than others, and I think that somehow on Long Island you've got to find that nice uh, uh, mix. And I'm going to mention to you again that that's what Grumman always did anyway. Mm -hmm. We were never cheap at Grumman, mm -hmm. at Grumman, but always somewhat better, better performing airplane. Now you mentioned to me earlier the commercial space is growing significantly. Yes. So while we're seeing perhaps a little bit of a downdraft from Washington and Pentagon reductions, will the commercial space be able to pick this up? Well, the commercial aircraft business is about to explode, and it's, uh, it's, it's very exciting. Most of us on the island have been more involved on the, the, the defense side, but most of us have also been somewhat involved on the commercial side. So it's a matter of changing that, that uh, market mix and, and share. But the work is very similar. The work's just not that different. Mm -hmm. But I do think the same strategy has to work uh, where we look to make the more complex products where Ann has talked about uh, moving into the composites business where now the technology side is more important than the, the, uh, the simple cost per, per hour. And so we need to make those adjustments and, and perhaps uh, that's how we're, we're spending our time these days strategizing. Mm -hmm. and 
Are we just a domestic business, aerospace, um, particularly as it relates to Long Island, or are you supplying companies like Bombardier in Canada, Embraer in, in Brazil, um, Airbus in Europe? I mean, it is a big global business these days. Right. I mean, for me personally, I'm not, but that doesn't. The potential is there for the industry to absolutely be global suppliers, and I think that is the direction that we're all going um, with technology and, and sure. capability that we have. There's no reason why we can't be. And you had mentioned earlier about uh, kind of a collective effort. Long Island Aerospace and uh, technological companies kind of coming together right, right. so that you could push this out to the rest of the country, other defense manufacturers, they could come here. This is kind of one-stop shopping. Right, and, and what I've mentioned was uh, the supply chain, the basic terminology of being a supply chain. Uh, when you get a Boeing or a Lockheed coming to visit the region, you're not just coming to visit that one company. You can get your material suppliers, you can hit your process houses, you can hit your welders and your machinists, and you know all of your subcontractors could be feasibly located all right here in this region. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the focus that we're trying to do is marketing Long Island as an aerospace region. You know, you can come here and hit a bunch of your different uh, vendors and, and subcontractors. And I think at the end of the day, we will all benefit by that, uh, by bringing the work to the region. There's and certainly I, enough for everybody. And how share. do you do that? How do you bring that all together so that when you call Lockheed or you call Boeing, they go, okay, you know, we can, we can call on Pete, we can call on Ann, we can call on Joe and right. get it all done. You know, yes, we have to go to Kennedy or LaGuardia, but we'll get out of right. town and, and do our business. Well, I think uh, Long Island has never been at a loss for organizations and associations. So um, mm -hmm. using that sort of... Um, infrastructure that Long Island has. You know, we use uh, you know, different organizations like ADAPT that mm -hmm. represents the aerospace industry. So ADAPT could theoretically organize a meeting and bring all the players to the table to meet with the leaders of these um, OEMs. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of where I see it going. And you know, we've reached a point we have to work together. Right. You know, um, we can't just individually compete. I think, again, the more we use one another and the strengths that we have in our capabilities and almost merging capabilities to make sure that we can make the whole part um, I think that's going to be a huge benefit to Long Island, um, but it's got to be that understanding that, you know, we're here to encourage all of the businesses to rise uh, and support one another. Pete, you're, you're, you're a veteran, a long time veteran of this business. Uh, if you had to look out into the future, 10, 15, 20 years, where's it going and what is Long Island's role in it? Well, I think Long Island continues to provide uh, important product for the prime contractors, both in the commercial and in the military side. And we will use our sophistication to take on more work share. If you look at the Boeing 787 aircraft mm -hmm. that's just starting to, to hit the market today, you'll see that Boeing makes very little of the aircraft actually. Mm -hmm. They're subcontracting with subcontractors who can take on larger roles. Um, on the defense side, these days uh, I make the entire E2D landing gear for Goodrich, now a part of United Technologies, that goes to north of Grumman. Uh, so I see our role uh, is taking up that slack between what the prime contractors used to make and what it is that we can make for the, the prime contractors today as a, as a more completed uh, product. You know, we talk about the island and how we work together as, as competitors and also partners sometimes. We can work together, uh, Ann and I, on projects together and supply more capability mm -hmm. by teaming on a proposal. But at the same time, the fact that we both live in the same region means that there will be the next tier of smaller suppliers who will support us because there's a, a robust marketplace in the region. So we have the best heat treater in the country on Long Island and mm -hmm. some of the best processing and coating houses and small subcontractors. That becomes part of this infrastructure that makes us more competitive, more capable, more likely to meet schedules, more likely to be able to handle this larger work share coming from the, the, the prime contractors. You know, you talk about the next generation, Ann. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have the people? Do we have the people with the skill set who can help to drive your business and Pete's business going forward. Right, I'd like to think we absolutely do. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether you're looking at people that are out of work now and need to be retrained to re-enter the workforce, or if you're looking at you know the young um, junior high, high school kids, we're even targeting elementary school, uh, to think about manufacturing, I absolutely do think we have the people. We always have had the people. Mm -hmm. 
It's just communicating with the region to let the parents and the teachers and the guidance counselors know uh, that there are companies here that are willing to train and hire and invest in these kids. Well, how do so. you get that accomplished? Because, you know, everyone go looks to Washington or they look to Albany and they go, you know, train these workers. But really, isn't it up to the manufacturers to kind of assist in this? It is, and I think that's a big reason why Pete and I are here with you today. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to get out from behind our desks and get out in the region and, and talk at schools and talk with... Uh, you know, leaders in the region so mm -hmm. that they understand what our needs are. And with small businesses, we need people usually quickly. Right. You know, so we need turnaround. So the communication that, you know, I have personally had and Pete with all the different, um, the community colleges here on Long Island, the other institutions, you know, there's so many different educational institutions. Everyone has really come to, to me personally and, and come to other business leaders and said, what can we do for you? What do you think you're going to need in the next year? Right. Um, and that's where really I think we do need an organization like an adapter, other organizations to do sort of that research and, and footwork so that we, we do know um, how many companies we have mm -hmm. and what is the forecast. There was research done a while ago, um, Connect Long Island, that sort of gave a five-year forecast on how many people we thought we would need in the industry in that cluster. I see. And it's that kind of thing that we need to keep driving, you know, mm -hmm. keep modifying that research, keep asking business leaders, what are you gonna need in the next one year, five year, 10 year? So that there are strategies in place, but it has to be, you know, again, Governor Cuomo has worked very hard. It has to be a regional strategy on where we're going with the workforce and what industries we're gonna focus on and uh, what products we're gonna continue to make mm -hmm. and create new products as well. Sure. So. Pete, I know you're in the aerospace business. Uh, yes. You're not gonna be making vacuum cleaners in the future. <laughs> I hope uh, not. <laughs> but, but, but what about other transportation systems? You know, you look at high-speed rail and how the growth of it around the globe. I mean, it, does anything from the aerospace uh, manufacturing here on Long Island kind of fit into high propulsion systems uh, building a high-speed rail? I, I think certainly th that has and will occur. You know, the high-speed rail maglev kind of technology really came out of the aerospace business and it still needs to be developed further. So things like materials and sophisticated controls and the kinds of things we build for airplanes, we mm. certainly could build for those programs. But let's go to the software business, mm. uh, which is mm -hmm. a big business on Long Island. And that business comes directly from the aerospace business and the defense business, more so than even the commercial aircraft business. So we have already a big software business really built on the heels of the aerospace business of the 1960s. I see, okay. And, uh, and if, if you had your druthers, um, mm -hmm. how would you coordinate the higher educational system you know, the Malloy Colleges, the Hostras, mm -hmm. the Stony Brooks, the Delphi, all of the colleges here to push the kind of people out that you might need, you know, down the road. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'm, I'm happy to report that Long Island's already doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we already have a, the STEM hub and, you know, there's so many different things going on. Uh, you know, the STEM hub is very active yes. in reaching what out to industry. It's the focus on um, science, technology, engineering, and math. Oh, I see. And they're yeah. forming uh, councils, basically, with business leaders and educators and, and a group of variety of people to focus on that issue, to focus on how we train people in the STEM mm -hmm. fields to get them quickly from the classroom into the setting of, of industry. So, again, I am I'm thrilled, and that's why I think it's such a unique time for Long Island. We're already doing it. We're already doing it. What do you need from Washington? What do you need from Albany? Uh, you know, there's going to be big cutbacks in Pentagon spending. I think you're all aware of that. Mm -hmm. and you're probably looking out at how you develop your businesses uh, in the future. Uh, but we know there's going to be cutbacks. So how is that going to impact us here? Well, what, what I think the first thing uh, comes to mind is you talk about what do we need. And it's kind of a general question that gets, gets a specific answer in time. But the first thing that we need is for all of these uh, uh, political uh, people and, and education people and others to realize that aerospace is still a very robust business on Long Island and that it's still a very robust business in the country and, and perhaps globally. That it's the best export business in America with a large 50 to 70 billion dollar balance of uh, mm. surplus of trade 
and that it's going to be here for some time, and that it's the kind of business that we should concentrate on. So our congressional leaders need to feel strongly about the Armed Services Committee and being involved in, in what is going to happen with the budget and how mm -hmm. it affects us and so on, and how that spending also yields great export business, strong national defense, and a great supplement to our commercial aircraft business as it is where the technology is developed. So first thing is recognition, and, and, and for the moment, that's an awful lot to... To, to put on the table. And do you see expansion going forward in the business? I mean, do you see it as a growth industry? I absolutely do. Again, mm -hmm. because there's all, you know, the, the tradition of what is here already. The fact that the businesses that are here are looking to stay here and expand here. Uh, a lot of us are truly vested. Mm -hmm. um, but a little bit earlier what you were saying, you know, we need to look at different job skills throughout the entire business. You know, so we need to focus on that high tech engineering, yes. you know, that's very important, obviously, with research and development. But we also have to make sure, you know, from Washington to here, that we're filling the job pool all the way throughout the workforce. Mm -hmm. You know, we need skills throughout the business, whether it's in our sales, our purchasing, our quality department, or out on the floor doing the machining and the welding. You know, we, ha we can't lose sight of the entire workforce and that entire group of people that we need to continue to educate. And that's the support. You know, your local schools and your local community colleges need a lot of support to fill that, you know, that if you want to say that middle class skill set uh, that is so imperative for businesses like ours to have. And what about the cost of doing business here? I mean, obviously, if we could bring the cost down, it would make the region more attractive to bring more mm -hmm. uh, aerospace manufacturing. O oddly enough, on an hourly basis, our production work is not so far away from the national average, oh, which really? is okay. interesting for people to know. Energy is very expensive, mm -hmm. which is something I think the state could do a, a lot with, and, and maybe more. And uh, other things are expensive, like uh, uh, you know some of the uh, expenses having to do with uh, uh, environmental control issues and processing, which is important, and I don't suggest we change. But I just go back to providing more capability and more productivity. I think we're good at that. So I, I also would like to add, though, to Anne's discussion about STEM and the education community and the array of talent that we need. Mm -hmm. In the initial conversations and meetings I attended some time ago and, and, and even recently, people were talking about providing mechanics and machinists and, and, and good skilled labor, which is very important to us. But it's equally as important that we have good mechanical engineers. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the, the, the most important guys in our company for the future is a fellow who graduated from Cornell and is a great uh, engineer and will help be one of the leaders going forward that will make us different than the company in South Carolina. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, you, you, you're very optimistic about the future and, and you think that uh, Long Island is going to continue to be a, a place for aerospace uh, to grow and thrive. I do. Obviously, I mean, you're, the challenges are there. We don't need to go over them. We need a much longer show to solve that right, problem. Right. Um, but I think the real focus is focusing on the assets and the quality things that Long Island has, which are many. Well, That's what we need to do. <clears throat> I want to continue this conversation. We will do so at a point in the future, and, uh, and we'll be talking about how we can maybe solve some of the problems and make it easier for uh, aerospace to grow on Long Island. Right. Thanks uh, so much for being with us today. Thank Terrific. you. Terrific. That yes. wraps up our conversation about aerospace and defense manufacturing on Long Island. Thank you, Anne Shaibanko Moore uh, and Peter Retaliata for your insights into this industry and your thoughts on how to grow the island's economy. For more on the Long Island Business Report, log on to our website. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Jim Paymar. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Long Island Business Report. See you next time. Funding for this program was made possible by Charlotte and David Eckert and the Rausch Foundation.